in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Any spirit of They're banished, raped, or murdered. Aid organizations estimate that thousands of children in Nigeria are accused of being witches every year. And often it's their own parents who think their sons or daughters are possessed by demons. Many churches or self-proclaimed spiritual healers perpetuate this trend. Especially in Christian southern Nigeria, where they make millions performing bizarre exorcism rituals. The federal government is hardly intervening to protect the children, and many police officers believe in black magic themselves. There are only a few activists opposing this cruel witch hunt. We're heading through the state of Akwa Ibom in southeastern Nigeria. Here it is especially common to brand children as witches. We found out that several children live on the streets in a nearby village because their families abandon them. Activist David Uman wants to check out the situation himself. He and his wife Anya Lovain have made these sad encounters their day-to-day -day work. These are areas where they drown children. Once you're branded a witch, they can take you to the shore while, take, while in the river, they just put you there. Different things happen. Children don't go to school in this area when you're branded a witch. A lot of child abuse is, go, is going on in these areas. There was a one time when Ernest, the child we rescued many years ago, was living on the streets with another child, another boy. And one night, he woke up while they set him on fire. So he now ran to the bush and hide. But his friend they put like a rope around his neck and dragged him until he died. In many villages, the helpers have contacts who report to them about new incidents involving supposed witches. Some banished children are said to be living in a goat shelter in this village. They've been here for several months, but the helpers just missed them. A neighbor says one of them ran into the forest when they heard the car coming. Our volunteer was telling me that uh, one of them was butchered. Butchered? Butchered, yes. Uh, recently, so the kids are a little bit scared when they see people. The mood during these rescue missions is often tense, but the residents stay calm in this village. They would be happy for the helpers to take away the children. Almost everyone here believes in witches. I thank God that my grandson moved out. He was possessed by demons and would make rats gnaw on my leg. But now I'm doing better again. David and Anya have no choice but to take off again without the children. The villagers say they'll call if they show up again. The couple's organization is called Land of Hope and is currently taking care of 88 children, all thrown out by their families. Here they receive schooling and can play and paint. But most importantly, they learn there's nothing wrong with them. Mary has been living here for over eight years. After her mother left the family, her father went to a pastor for guidance. And from that point on, he was convinced his daughter was a witch. He actually wanted to take my life. It tied me up. So he wanted to it tied me up and he wanted to use knife and my neighbor that was around rescued me that day so he actually asked me that I shouldn't return home again and my dad was also in support that I shouldn't return home again and I, I, I left because of the fear that it might end my life anytime. Mary ended up on the street, and at just eight years old, she had to fend for herself, rejected by her community. There was once I was beaten up on the streets, and the other was sexually abused. I was actually looking for a place to sleep, so it gave me a condition that to have a place to sleep that I must go down with him, so I had no other choice. 
Two years later, NGO workers found Mary and took her in. Ever since, Mary's big passion has been singing, and she rehearses several times a week with other band members. They plan to perform live soon. For a long time, Mary was even sure herself she was a witch. But her love for music has restored her self-confidence. Whenever I feel, let me see, whenever I feel sad and I start singing or I hear music somewhere, I feel very good because music always is some of my sadness. He was, he yes, was, he was with, uh, When David and Anya founded their organization eight years ago, they started out with just a few children. Then in 2016, a clip of a rescue mission went viral. It shows Anya giving a little emaciated boy named Hope cookies and water. The video won over the hearts of many new donors, but her skin color also caused a stir because only Anya got all the media hype. As a young woman from Denmark, she left her old life as a sales clerk behind her to rescue witch children in Nigeria. I, sometimes I used to tell Anya that uh, if, this, uh, if this rescue, I was the one who, went, who, who carried uh, hope or give the water, it, it, it shouldn't have been this wild. Normally, Western media, they, they actually know to promote the good parts of the white skin in Africa. That is natural, we can't take that away. The online community has really flamed Anya. Some called her a white woman with savior syndrome, and that's one of the friendlier attacks. People will say, you just come to Africa, to Nigeria for fame and glory. You just come there to exploit children so you can be famous. Our focus is just our work, make sure that children are okay, they are fine, they're doing great. And then uh, people can, um, it's their headache. Hope is still living in the communal home. The once starving boy has grown up into a healthy eight-year-old. And he's top of his class despite being deaf and mute. On this day, the team is taking Hope to visit his biological parents for just the second time since he was rescued six years ago. And it's no easy matter seeing them again. But the organization values such encounters and only makes exceptions if the children absolutely refuse. The idea is to show families what has become of their supposed witch children. There's a lot of suspense, especially since there's a camera crew. And Hope has to force a smile. But then the father shares something truly surprising. I hope my son can forgive me one day. I pray he will handle things better than I did. During the encounter, it becomes clear that family troubles also played a part in everything. Hope's biological mother left, and his stepmother came along with her own children. And Hope, with his disability, became unwanted. The visit lasts half an hour. Then in the car, David explains why he thinks so many children here are deemed witches. This area is they are illiterate, and birth control is something they don't do here. They give birth to show strength, uh -huh. to show that the man is a strong person and is capable. So, uh, child rearing here, child birth here is very high. So when you give birth to the children you cannot take care of, there's every tendency that that child will be branded a witch and uh, abandoned. Another reason for these out-of-control witch hunts is the role played by radical churches. On our way back, we visit a self-proclaimed prophet. And there's already one family waiting for her services. They say their child is possessed and hope for her to be healed. I pray only in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus. And the out, yes. And when you want to get out, we'll get, we'll get out with force, and you will know that something leaves this person. 
The healer shows us videos of the events on her phone. Here she says an evil spirit is leaving a girl. In the end, she agrees to let us film one of her rituals. It brings together Christian symbols, animalist influences, and pure superstition. The girl is lucky because the would-be prophet is convinced there's no evil spirit in her. Come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command her now, out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's a lie. See what they, they used to they give her to do. They bring it here. What happened to this family is wrongly. Hmm. That what? is how they have been doing this community. I deliver many of them and reconcile many families because of that false accusation. Just as we're preparing to leave, a father comes in with his little son. The child is terrified. And the man freely explains he's been letting his son sleep on the street, beating him, and even wants to kill him. The father claims his child admitted he was possessed, and the police said they didn't want to get involved. The healer says she's prepared to take a look at the boy. But then she suddenly breaks out into tears. God will show mercy for the generation. Mm -hmm. They are punishing nonsense souls that God brought in this world to do to them. If I, a mother, labor for nine months, bring out a child, then leave it in the street, this kind of stage, I feel so bad in me that I can say this child is a witch that I can go and throw in the street. Why do you bring her in this world? Is this all just a show? Or is the woman really starting to question her livelihood? David and Anya want to take the boy back with them. But they still need the authorities' permission, so they have to leave him for now. The 88 children who've made Land of Hope their new home have managed to escape the brutal witch hunt. A tragedy destroying innocent people's lives every day in Nigeria. And Mary has left that nightmare behind her. Her parents will likely never know what a strong young woman she has grown up to be.